Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to this Dealer Built Minute brought to you by Dealer Built, the different DMS. I'm Ryan Girardi alongside Mike, the car guy, Carrera, and our special friend and guest today, Sean Ugrin from Spiffit. Hello, Sean. Hello, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. And Mike, you lined this up. You guys have a little history and rapport. Why don't you take a moment to introduce Sean? I will, and, and the way that I can best introduce it is through personal experience as, as a sales manager and working in the automotive industry for 30 years. I understand and lived by the premise of Sean's saying that I've, I've kind of taken from him and used many, many times. If you want to sell it, spiff it. Spiffs have been a, a function of my life for many years as, as a service technician. When I first got started, I was paid spiffs on certain services and such. So you get into sales when you have certain vehicles or certain programs you're trying to incentivize. You put a spiff on them. Salespeople understand spiffs. It gives them a goal, something to chase for. The, the difficulty in management with monitoring Monitoring spiffs is the little handwritten vouchers, the spreadsheets, all the, the complex of ways that we're paying them out and then a salesperson doesn't get his copy and then on his paycheck, did, did my spiff show up on the check that I get paid on those spiffs? So it's, it's kind of a nightmare administratively, but they work. When I first saw the spiff it program, I was, I was floored. I was blown away at the simplicity and the ease of use. and as a salesperson, the ability, the transparency of having the dashboard, and I don't want to take it all from you, but from myself, if I was a salesperson and I'm looking in my dashboard and I see that Joe is outselling me, I'm going to be motivated. You know, there's no way Joe's outselling me. Are you kidding me? No. Yeah. If Joe can do it, I can do it. And it creates that, that friendly competition that drives us beyond even what we think we can do, right? Competition drives the best performance. When I was a, a competitive swimmer, I could be in the pool and I'd think, man, that was my best lap ever. And I'd get out and look at the time and I was like, what the heck? But then when I looked over my shoulder and I saw someone right there driving me, that competition pushed me even beyond what I thought I was capable of. And I'd get out of the pool sometimes. I've never thought I could hit that kind of time. And that's what that, that dashboard does is if you see somebody doing it, four minute mile thing, right? Absolutely. This this guy's selling this many of that product or that many of these vehicles, then I can as well. well yeah, so. It's friendly competition too. I mean, you want to be as good as your peers. You want to look around and say, hey, how's how's Ryan doing? How's Mike doing? Hey, we're gonna we're gonna push each other. You know, the money counts, but truly at the end of the day, who gets the bragging rights? Competition's good though. It's a good thing. I mean, and and it also brings some fun. I mean, you think right. about it, some gamification. Um, takes a dull, you know, something in a dull day sometimes, and in the morning you look at it. Hey, I was three yesterday. I'm number one today. Four days left to go. And by the way, I've made about fourteen hundred dollars in spiffs. That's not too bad. But you know, that's that's on the on the front line. And the whole idea, you know, the whole premise behind Spiff it was, um, from my experience running automotive channels where we were supplying product. So I was with the OEM supplier. We would have channels where we were, we were working with resellers, and I had agents out in the field, and I had salespeople out in the field, and they were either calling on uh, uh, factories or AutoZone type retailers, but also on big dealer groups. And in those dealer groups, there's a whole number of spiffs that are being run. They're either vendor-based spiffs or OEM-based spiffs. The group itself sometimes has leverage, and they can target. They want to target specific behaviors. And the more of that that they, they push, it drives KPIs, it, it drives retention, it drives profitability. And it's, it's something that you need to engage on a 30-day cycle, right? Because we're in this 30-day cycle every 30 days. So if you don't engage people on, on the first day to get them to change their behavior, to push something that matters to you as a manager, then your strategy kind of falls flat, right? And let's be honest, you know, the front line is, is under a lot of pressure. Service advisors are just trying to get their customers um, through the drive, get them back to the office, get them back in the store in one day, make them happy. The truth is they're not necessarily thinking about your strategy for the day until you give them that what's in it for me. And sure. that's what a spiff is, right? Yeah. That's what we're doing with the bonus. So, what I like to say is that we are the tactical arm for your compensation strategy, your bonus strategy. Um, you can have, you can think about all these great programs and plans, and I've seen complex pay plans and complex incentive programs. Make it simple. Engage the front line. Tell them what the rules of the game are. Make it transparent, and we extract from the DMS 
consistently so that it pretty much people are getting real-time data. Now think about that. The old way that this used to happen was that you would be keeping record, right? You kept a book, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. And your people would keep a book and they would challenge you at the end of the month, hey Mike, you owe me this. What about changing that dynamic and letting everybody know every day where they stand, how much money they make? It's empowering. Oh, definitely. And that was the whole idea. Let's empower them to drive strategy and to, we like to say, you know, a rising tide raises all ships. As long as you're maintaining the program, you're maintaining your margin, the sky should be the limit. And, you know, it's, it, it also is a pretty good retention program for your staff as well. When they're happy, they're happy. What do you say to counter that old school GM that says, why would I pay the salespeople, the service advisors, to do what they're already doing? I already, they already get paid to do their job. I don't in believe the, in base, base spiff. pay. You know, uh, my philosophy is that base pay gets you base performance. Okay, and I'm not saying that that's not that's not something substantial. It is, and that people should be doing their job. They do, but you can take a portion of that. You can even hold back a portion of that. You don't even have to spend more money. Just deploy it differently. Save a portion of that compensation and put it into contests. Put it into a SPIF program. Do something different with it, right? In order to not only just pay them where that piece of money for that activity gets lost in the paycheck, pull it out. That which is measured gets done. So if you want them to focus on key things, pull it out, put it into a contest, put it into SPIF it, drive it and engage it and you'll see more of it and create a fun environment. And also, there, there are vendors and, and OEM monies that are available that not all dealerships are taken advantage of, correct? It's true. So a lot of times you can find, um, you can find funds that might be available with your partners. So they're not directly available, but if you hit volume on certain programs, especially with OEMs, like some of the OEMs right now are pushing accessory sales really heavy. You know, non-port installed, dealer installed accessory sales. Um, at the end of the quarter, if you hit your numbers, there's a considerable amount of money that comes back to the dealer from the OEM. Now, if you plan ahead, you can basically take a portion of that to drive that frontline behavior to hit your numbers. If you want to sell a, it, spiff it. It's a vir it's, if you want to sell it, spiff it. It's a virtuous circle, and you have to keep feeding it. It doesn't just happen on its own, right? Or the other saying is, people move business, right? And incentives move people. So. We're all incentivized, it's human behavior. Why do you leave work early on a Friday afternoon? Because you have to meet your wife to go take her out for dinner. Why do you um, you know, try and finish your work early before lunch? Because you want to get out and maybe go to the gym and get a 45 minute break and get back. There's an incentive for everything we do. We're gonna go and have lunch now because we're all hungry and that's my incentive. So everybody lives on spits. Mm -hmm in one way or another. There's nothing wrong with them as long as they're deployed correctly, transparently, and there's and there, you're not it's not about uh, it's not about supporting bad behavior because people will say, well, spiffs encourage bad behavior. My answer to that is no, you have to have the right culture in place. Ethics come from your culture, not from the incentives. We're salespeople. Give us the incentives. How does all this tie into the DMS? You had mentioned that before. Well, it uses the real-time information out of the DMS rather than a handwritten record or someone's uh, opinion. Hey, I sold this product. I should get a spiff on it. And in the, the busyness of a, of a work day, it's not uncommon for a service manager to go, oh, uh, yeah, I, I thought I saw that and sign off on a voucher. And then at the end of the week, when he's submitting all these vouchers to accounting, going, I don't know for sure that that customer got that service. It, it just takes all that information. And, and makes it legit because it's real. It's coming out of the DMS. It's, it's so Joe you, can't say I sold a pair of tires to this customer. It he doesn't have to say it. The system shows him what sold and what yeah, didn't it's, sell. It's automatically reconciling off the DMS. So our are you integrating with different DMSs? Yes, we are. Okay, including dealer bill. Yes, and we are. So maybe including you guys can speak to that integration. Like from a, what does a dealer need to know about that integration between? The nice part about the dealer bill integration with Spiffit is it's all within the DMS. So okay. it's not a 
a separate system where they have to minimize a window, go to a different website, pull it up. They're able to do it all within the same window that they're already working in during the course of their day. And it makes it really convenient. And that's really the, the difference between our integration and, I mean, he integrates with most everybody that's out there. We've just kind of brought him into our system so he's within the... So the, the case with DealerBuild is they saw what we were doing and they said, this is very unique. And as being innovators, being upstarts, I mean, let's let's be honest, they came in and they, they took on the large companies. Um, so they're looking at everything different. I mean, the different DMS is real. So they came to us and, and said, there's a number of our dealers that are using your, your platform. Um, we think this could be very complimentary. How about we form a closer relationship with this? And so now we've made, we've made it even better environment and better experience for dealer built DMS users. Okay. Um, we have we have partnerships with other DMSs and everybody's able to use our platform. But the difference is here that um, I would say that we're much more within that environment so that you're not jumping out to multiple places. Mm -hmm. You can see it within the environment of managing your store and then you see your SPIF programs. As you're doing your day to day work you can see everything in one environment. Okay. And that is a unique thing for us, and I believe it's unique for you as well. Very much so. So a dealer would sign up for your services, at, at, if they're using DealerBuilt, they would sign up for your services, and then the integration is, is already there. Is included, built in. Yes, and, and our workflow in the background between the two companies is pretty much seamless. We can have a DealerBuilt customer up and running within three days. Okay. So. All right, good. That helps. Definitely. Yep. That helps. It's really unique. Well, good. So thank you. Yeah, Sean, thank you. Sean, you, uh, you grin everybody from Spiffit and Mike Carrera. You're I'm here all week. In. Tip your waitress. Did you say you've been here all week? I said I'm here all week. Oh, Tip your waitress. Tip the waitress. There you go. So thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Dealer Built Minute brought to you by a Dealer Built, the different DMS. I'm Ryan Girardi. Thank you.